welcome everyone to the very first perhaps last, um, we're gonna try it out and see how it goes, uh, live networking workshop. I'm so happy to have you all here with me. And as I was saying, thank you so much for carving out time from your busy schedules. Um, as you know, it is one of the most important things that we can do for our careers is to actually give ourselves time and space to actually think about this stuff and step away from the to-do list and out of the busyness and whether it's networking or something else, just really give ourselves uh, permission to think about this stuff. Um, so step one, you've already accomplished. And thank you so much for spending this time with me of all the precious things that you could spend your time on that you are here with me and everyone else. Um, so if you haven't already, go ahead and type in the chat your name, where you're calling in from, how you know me or how you came to found, find the session. And for the people who are watching this video after the fact. Um, I'm doing this because I think it illustrates beautifully by the people that we have on this call. There are people that know me from my corporate career. There are people that know me from my coaching career or part of my career. Uh, people that I've met online through social media, people I have kind of been in orbit with um, and might know their names, but I'm for the first time seeing their faces. And so if there's one thing you take away from today, it's that networking and building relationships gets to be really easy and aligned and you know through whatever channels make sense and work for you um, so let's get into this one other thing um, if you have if you want to grab a piece of paper and something to write with um, like i said i'm going to have some prompts and things for you to think about and so you might want to have something handy just to to jot down ideas so let's get into the agenda so First, I'm gonna do a brief introduction. Who the heck is Caroline? Why is she talking to me about networking? Uh, we will go then into some of the biggest networking myths that I hear and what to do instead. We will then roll into one very simple habit that you can literally start as soon as we get out of this call. So much of what we do in our careers, if we make it a habit, if we make it part of our routines, it just gets easy. It's just part of what we do. And then we'll round it out with, I will share a little bit about my networking course for those of you that want to go deeper into this. Uh, we will talk about how to stay connected and open it up for questions. So type yes in the chat if people are ready to learn how to connect and network like humans. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so who am I? I'm Caroline, I'm a career and leadership coach. And I think it's really important to explain to you that I am not a natural networker. I'm an INTJ, I'm shy, I'm socially anxious, I'm an Aquarius. Um, and all of those things basically build up to say that I'm, you know, it's not natural for me to walk into a group of people and just start chatting. I'm much more comfortable um, with the written word and corresponding with people that way. If you would have seen me at like a party or a social event, I'd be the weirdo like hugging the buffet table or hanging out at the bar trying to not engage in small talk. And so I share that because I want you to know that if I can find a way into networking, so can you. Um, and really my journey was that so much of my corporate career, not just with networking, but in general was spent kind of me feeling like I couldn't be fully authentic um, and me feeling kind of drained and not energized. And so when I started my business, again, more than just networking, when I started my business, I really wanted to make sure that everything I did was totally aligned with the life I wanted to lead, who I'm who I am at my best and all that kind of stuff. And so that's really the lens that we are gonna look at everything in our careers, but in today, today in particular, uh, that's the lens that we're gonna look at uh, networking through. So let's get into this, right? So it's not about networking tactics. We all know we're supposed to network. We all know how to do it. I, I bet if I asked each one of you, how do you actually network, you would be able to answer, right? And whatever we don't have the answers to very practically, we can Google. And still, most of us don't like doing it because it doesn't feel good, okay? And really that's what we're talking about today. So here's a recent LinkedIn survey that I thought really beautifully illustrates this point. So this was a survey they did towards the end of last year. It was focused on people who are out of work. 
And I want you to look at these first two bullets. So 82% of the people that were polled said networking is vitally important, right? We know that networking is important. We don't need to convince a lot of people. 73% had actually had a positive experience getting hired through networking. Again, don't have to convince people. But the story is in those second two bullets, right? Of these same people, half avoided a social event because of how they felt. Keyword, that didn't feel good. Um, and when you look at these words, embarrassed, uneasy, ashamed, right? Extreme example, but this gets to the heart of what we're talking about here. And so effective networking is really foundationally about getting underneath the fears, the assumptions, the limiting beliefs that we all have um, and shifting that so that it feels good so that we can have the conversations we want to have. A lot of networking as you talk to people is kind of legacy outmoded advice. It's how we think we're supposed to network as we'll talk about uh, throughout today. And really this is about, well, what's, what's actually the conversation I want to have? How would I approach this um, if I didn't have to worry about the networking rules? So maybe you're saying, Caroline, you know, I don't feel uneasy or ashamed. I have a job that doesn't resonate. So let's see which ones of these resonate. So I want you to type into the, the chat um, or say, heck yeah, as I go through these, any of these um, examples of not feeling good and whether they apply to you. So raise your hand at home if you're watching the replay or type into the chat or raise your hand on the video since you all can see each other. Do you dread the awkwardness of that initial reach out? Like maybe you know that once you're in the conversation, you'll be fine, but it's just like, oh, how do I position this? How do I kind of connect to this person that I want to talk to? Maybe it's someone that you really, really like and enjoy, but the relationship has lapsed. And so you're like, oh my gosh, I haven't talked to this person in two years. How do I like show up <laughs> two years later and say, oh, can, can you help me? I know we haven't talked in a while, but I need your help. Um, maybe you struggle to talk about what you want. Maybe it's not clear. Maybe, you know, I used to have a lot of trouble when I was in anti-money laundering working for a bank. Like, how do I actually explain what I do? And sometimes it gets a little bit mushy. Maybe you just feel weird in general about asking for help or talking about yourself. I, I run into a lot of people who are fine, you know, putting that spotlight on other people and interviewing them and asking about their stories. And then someone turns to them and says, tell me about yourself. And they're just like, I, I, I don't even know where to start. Um, maybe you feel like you're wasting people's time. I did a whole video rant about that one. And maybe you're great at having those conversations. A lot of extroverts I know, they're great at talking to people, right? They can have a lot of conversations, but when it comes to, okay, we had this great conversations, we're going our separate ways, how do we follow up? How do we keep the relationship going? How do we kind of get to that next level or that second date, so to speak? And last but not least, raise your hand or type yes in the chat if you fear rejection, right? So maybe you, you want to do <laughs> the courageous thing. Maybe you want to ask for help. Maybe you are ready to ask someone to buy into your idea or share your thoughts. And there's the potential that they're going to say no, or that they don't like your idea, or that they say they like your idea and they'll help you and then don't follow through. So yeah, I'm seeing some comments. Yeah, no one, <laughs> who likes rejection, right? And so Hopefully you're drawing the line here, right? When we feel awkward, when we're struggling to feel confident talking about what we want, when we feel weird, just even letting someone listen to us talk about our wants and needs, of course, it's gonna be demotivating. We're not gonna wanna jump into these networking conversa conversations. Okay, so we've talked about the dark side. Let's go for a moment, moment to the side of goodness and light. This networking stuff, works. All right. And I want to give you some beautiful examples. I've been teaching networking in my one-on-one -on -one coaching for years, uh, but I just launched this course uh, last year. And so I'm just going to share with you the examples just from these two rounds of networking that we've done. And these are just a few examples. So five job offers, right? This is a six-week course, five job offers. Some people got multiple job offers. 
um, one person um, in this very beautiful kind of rekindle the relationship she had got a job out of it. She, she runs her own business, so got a contract out of it, and then used the people she met in that engagement to meet new people and got more work. She now has so much work that she has to hire help. How awesome is that? And it's just by me talking to the people that she's meeting in the course of the day. Okay, one love match. I'm so happy to share this one. Obviously, I'm a career and leadership coach. This one makes me so happy on a number of levels. Um, I think it speaks to the beauty of, you know, when we're truly building relationships and connecting like humans, like so often in networking, we're focused on the thing, right? I want to get this job. I want to get my resume to the top of the pile. I want to navigate to get an introduction to this person. And where the real match, and, and that's good, right? It's good to have a strategy. It's okay to want what you want. There's no problem with that. But when we close ourselves off to all of the things and all of the possibilities that could happen that we might not foresee, that's when we shut stuff off like this. And so this is a beautiful example. This actually started because someone in the course was moving to a new city. Someone else in the course said, hey, I know someone in your industry. Do you want an introduction? They met ostensibly to talk business because they're in the same industry and they ended up dating. So again, maybe you'll find your love match, maybe you won't, but again, it speaks to the larger idea of really, obviously they stayed open <laughs> to their humanity um, because now they're dating. Okay, so I'm not gonna go through all of this, but you're gonna see a lot of other examples that aren't kind of pure, we think of networking as like get a job. There's a lot of other beautiful things that can come out of networking, again, if we stay open. The last thing I do want to share here is something I'm really proud of myself. And that is after the networking course ended, both groups of people decided independently that they're going to continue to meet on their own. Like I'm not even involved. They're just taking it forward. And I think we'll, we'll talk about this concept in a, in a minute, but part of, I think, just who I attract, and you can kind of see by the people on this call, people are from all different industries, ge geographies, roles, stages of their career. And there's a beautiful thing that happens when you bring people together that you know, on paper, you might not think these people have a lot in common. And that's actually where the magic happens. And we'll talk about why that is. But I think the fact that they have, both of these groups have decided to stay together on their own speaks to the fact that they have enough in common in terms of human experience and the, about the challenges that we all have and we all share when it comes to networking and going after the career we want. Um, enough of that in common that they can relate and help each other. Um, and then also, you know, despite the fact that they are from such different geographies, industries, and stages. All right, so let's get into networking, networking myths and pitfalls. Okay, so again, want to hear from you in the chat, which of these resonates? How many of you, when you think about networking, kind of think of like a networking event, like it has to be like in this giant, room or a, you know an official event and primarily with strangers maybe if you're old like me handing out business cards kind of like an in-person sort of event um so i was i was surprised that this one still comes up oh yeah anna not really awesome so anna has already shifted to kind of the online world but i'm surprised that a lot of people who still kind of think um that we need a formal networking opportunity oops okay how many people think that you need a polished script or an elevator pitch or really think, you know, kind of really worry about what you need to say or feel like you need to like hit your marks and say the right thing. Yeah. Okay. So we've got some people relating. Um, okay. So now get ready. We're going to do an exercise around this next item. So we tend to oversize, overemphasize job titles and hierarchy. So here's what I mean by this. Of course, we want to be strategic. If we are looking for, uh, if we're interested in a particular organization and we're looking for particular roles, of course, we want to talk to the people who work at those organizations and work in those roles. We want to see if it's the right fit for us. But we can also overemphasize that and miss out on opportunities. So here's the exercise. I invite you all 
to write down, and I would love if you feel comfortable to share in the chat, one thing you want people to know about you that has nothing to do with your job title or what you do for a living. So think about that for a minute. I'll give you an example just to get the juices flowing. So maybe you're a project manager and you love photography, right? I'm a career coach. I love interior design. My design style is eclectic. You can probably see uh, behind me. Um, and I'm an aspiring minimalist. All right, so think about something, nothing to do with your job title. Does everyone have something in mind? Give me a high sign. Give me something. Maybe people are thinking. Um, so as you're thinking about that, I'm gonna invite you to think about how whatever it is that you have in mind, think about how that actually makes you, how, how it differentiates you and makes you better at what you do for a living. So again, back to that project manager example, like maybe they're really good at uh, observing. Maybe they're really good at, um, you know, kind of seeing the big picture and how things fit together and how people interact. Maybe they have great attention to detail, but hopefully you're starting to see the things that we do even outside of our careers, how that actually brings a perspective that literally no one else can bring. And, and I am asking you to think of one, but literally you have tens or, you know, hundreds <laughs> of things that make you special. All right. Um, and so now I want you to think, so now that you know how this makes you special, let's bring it back to networking. So I want you to imagine, right? What if the people on this call or the people out there in the world, what if they could benefit from something you know that they wouldn't ever know that you know because they're looking at your job title, right? They see your job title and they think, oh, this, this person can't help me, right? And so they never reach out to you. And now I want you to flip it. And I want you to imagine all of the opportunities that maybe you're missing out on if you just purely screen people because of where they sit in the hierarchy at an organization. Oh, they're not senior enough or, or they're too junior or because of their job title. So type in the chat if this is landing with people because what I, what I want people to take away is that we are all so much more than our job titles, right? And so this brings in the human connection. We can't possibly know um, who our network, who the person that we're talking to, we don't know who they know, right? We don't know what their past career experience is, right? We don't know um, what their unique skills and abilities are until we talk to them, right? And I would just invite you to kind of even consider the power of this group and the, the little we know each other uh, about each other, right? We just know a little bit about where we're from, our first names and that sort of thing. But just imagine if we kind of were tasked, I'm not going to task you to solve a problem, don't worry. But if we were tasked to solve a problem or tasked to brainstorm, just imagine the collective power of this brain trust, right? And that's what I'm really talking about here, right? Is that yes, we should be strategic and yes, we should also stay open to the people behind the job title. So is this resonating with folks? Give me a thumbs up, thumbs down. We can take your questions at the end. Um, awesome. Okay, so let's get into the truth about networking. First and foremost, we get to be freaking human. So many people, I don't know what it is about networking, but so many people, even people that love to have conversations and meet people, we start feeling that we need to, you know, just get a little bit more formal or robotic or just kind of feel like we need to tamp down the best parts of ourselves and we can't be the, the normal person that would be um, just as engaging and fun and whatever is important to us in a regular conversation um, as with networking. Um, there was someone who is amazing in our first, I mean, everyone's amazing in, in the networking course, but there was one person in particular who had gotten feedback um, in the first round of the coaching course or the networking course, she had gotten feedback that she was too bubbly. And so she, first of all, how dark does your soul have to be to tell someone that they're too 
bubbly. Unfortunately, that sort of stuff happens all the time. But anyway, she'd gotten this feedback. And so she was going into these conversations feeling like she couldn't be like the happy, delightful, like just literally infectious uh, person that she was. And it was such a delight actually to have her in the call. And it was so fun. I would watch everyone's faces whenever this person would speak because literally her energy and her light was so infectious that people would just smile when she started talking and it would just kind of even like perk up um, from what, whatever they were doing. And so oftentimes we feel, you know, maybe it's not being bubbly, but I want you to think about the times where you kind of feel like you shave off those edges or you don't ask the question or you don't crack that joke um, because you don't feel like you can bring your full self. And obviously the more of yourself um, that you bring all of those quirks and those things that we're told to kind of um, grind out of ourselves, those are actually the things that, you know, people want to know about us and actually intrigue people about us. Um, the second thing, so networking is about having powerful conversations with everyone. So we've talked about um, some people thinking that networking is about conversations with strangers. Um, at the opposite end of the spectrum, people will say, uh, well, you know, my network is my network, so I guess I'm just stuck with the people that I already know. And those two groups are important for sure. There was a really powerful third group in the middle. Uh, they're technically called weak ties. And essentially they're the people that our network knows that we don't yet know. And the point is, and the truth is that we need all three groups for different reasons. Sometimes we need to expand and talk to strangers. Sometimes we get to leverage the people that already know, like, and trust us. And there is real magic in those weak ties, because those are the people like this group that get us out of our bubble, get us out of the juices that we tend to marinate in and all, kind of the way that we see things because you know we're in the fishbowl or whatever. Um, and it's these weak ties that pull us out and give us the new opportunities, give us the new way of thinking. And then lastly, I'm curious if this resonates with people. A lot of people, so I had invited someone to my last networking course, he was like really engaging in a lot of the uh, social media posts I was making. He had a lot to say, a lot of great questions. And I said, hey, do you want to join this networking course? I think you'd be great. Um, you know, your energy would be great for the group. And I think you'd learn a lot. And he said, no, thanks. I'm good. I'm happy where I am. Um, as if to say, like, he wasn't looking for a job and therefore he didn't really need to network. And I think a lot of people think like this, and I think it's a real missed opportunity because at the basis, hopefully you're hearing this theme, this is about building relationships, right? And so this is just as important to be successful in where you are exactly now, to be able to get people on board with your ideas, um, to build those relationships, to you know spur those thinking, to have people think of you first when they have an opportunity before they post it. Um, so raise your hand or type in the chat um, if you've ever jumped into an opportunity, or maybe you didn't even jump, maybe you evaluated it, but you got into an opportunity and you were like, oof, this was not the right career move. Does that resonate with anyone? Yeah. Yeah. And again, this is the beauty. It's really hard to effectively evaluate an opportunity when you are in that pick me, pick me, like tap dancing on stage interview energy, right? When we're in the interview, we're, we're trying to get the ring, right? Or, you know, the same as Trina, we have some business owners on the call. When we're trying to get the partnership, when we're trying to get the contract, we're, we're not really thinking, do I really want this? Um, at least it's really hard to do. And so that's the beauty of having these ongoing conversations because we can really get to know the place, the people, the roles, all of that kind of stuff. All right. So let's get into one habit you can start right now, not literally right now, right after this call. <laughs> um, so, and maybe you do this, but this is a habit that I found, like, obviously I know how to do this habit. Even I find that sometimes I forget to do this. And this is braced based on the premise, like raise your hand if you can unequivocally say that 100% of your, you know, very close immediate network is crystal clear on your next career goal. They all know exactly what you want and how to help you. I'm not seeing any yeses. 
So I'm going to go with, <laughs> I'm going to go with, um, there's some opportunity right there. And this is very common, right? We assume our network knows a lot more than they do. And maybe that's because we spend a lot of time talking about what we don't like at work or how much we want to change, but are we really giving them actionable information. So if we're running a business, do they know we're looking for clients? Do they know the clients that we're looking for? Um, think about your manager and your peers around you. Do they know you want to get promoted? Do they know when you want to get promoted? Do they know that you expect a pay rise with that promotion? So tell them the details and then tell them again, because I think as much as we all want to help each other, we are all so wrapped up in our own heads and thinking about our own stuff um, that even with the best of intentions, we forget, right? We forget what's um, going on with our friends' careers and particularly the details. So I invite you all and type yes in the chat or raise your hand if you will commit to after this call. You don't even have to set up anything different, but just commit to the next time you talk to one friend or one person in your network, give them an update on, hey, this is what I'm gonna do in, or this is what I'm trying to do in my career. This is what I'm thinking about. Again, it doesn't need to be super concrete. Just let them know what's going on with you. All right, love it, love the buy-in. And the second thing, um, tell them how they can support you. And this might sound obvious, but I think, again, the best of intentions, we tend to help others in the way that we ourselves would like to be helped, which isn't necessarily the best way to help you, right? So tell them, literally tell them, take the guesswork out of it, tell them how they can support you. Maybe that is, I gave you some examples here. Maybe it's, I'm thinking about my next career move. I want to run it by you and get your opinion. Um, in some cases, you might want to say, um, I want to run this by you. I don't want your opinion. I want your support. <laughs> like, don't tell me what you think about this because I, I don't want you to crush my dream. Um, ask who they can introduce you to. Notice I didn't say, can you introduce me to someone or do you know of anyone? That's a yes, no question. Just ask who they can introduce you to to get them flipping through their mental address book. And I also want you to think, again, this is really key. Don't limit it to people who you know can help you in your career. Think about how else they could help you so that you can better focus on your career. So at home, maybe it's, hey, can you help me with chores at home? So I can carve out an hour to think about my career or have this conversation. Maybe at work, it's, hey, can you run point? on this deliverable or step into this call so I can spend an hour strategizing, right? Tell people how to help you. Give me a thumbs up or a heck yeah, or some sort of sign that this is resonating with folks. I'm gonna go to the next slide. Awesome, okay. Um, hopefully you're hearing, this is a lot more than just networking. What we are talking about here is leadership. We are talking about showing up everywhere more confidently at your best. And I want you to think about, again, beyond networking, I want you to think about a time where you've been in a meeting or in a conversation where you've wanted to ask a question or say thing, but you've kind of held back. Maybe you wanted to crack a joke and you're like, oh no, you know, maybe it's not right. And you basically kind of second guessed yourself and again, tamped yourself down in some way. Maybe you didn't feel comfortable kind of telling people what you want. There was someone in the last round of networking, she had just gotten promoted, which was so awesome that she was in the networking course when she didn't need a job. She had just kind of gotten the thing and yet was working on building her relationships. And she said, you know what, I really want to work abroad, but I don't want to tell my boss yet because it's too soon. I just got this job. Right. When in fact, we want to be telling people all of the time so that we can build that runway so that she could make sure that she could work abroad uh, when she wanted to. But these are all the ways that's just one example of a way that we just kind of feel like we're not able to speak freely about what we want for whatever reason. And I'm not going to go through all of these, but essentially, you know, think about having this group of people around you that you look forward to talking to. So it's not this like, oh, have to network, have to drag myself through it, but actually having a group of people that are actively 
supporting you, even when you're not talking to them, right? You've planted the right seeds and they're off looking for opportunities on their own for you. Um, and then in the conversations, it's really a soft landing in a place that you feel energized talking to them, right? It's fun, it's engaging. This is building this team of people was one of the biggest breakthroughs for me in my own career. I really didn't have this because I didn't network uh, when I was in corporate, but I certainly didn't have, you know, I wasn't actively intentionally creating this team around me. And I have to say as a business owner, it's been so wonderful to know that I can literally pick up the phone or text someone on just about anything I need, uh, which has been critical in this past year, um, that I can do that at a moment's notice. So just imagine having that for yourself. All right. Okay, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about the course. I'm gonna give you a link for those of you who want to check it out more on your own, uh, but I do wanna take you through um, some of the details just to, um, address your questions. So this was really interesting because I, I launched this course as a pilot. I'm a one-on-one -on -one coach. I do deep long-term transformation. And I was like, ah, six-week course, I don't know. Let's give it a go. And it has surprised me in the best possible way. I shared those examples with you at the beginning. It has surprised me at how deep the shifts are for people and um, the results that they have gotten just, just from a little bit of time thinking about their career. Um, so in the first couple of weeks, we focus on the mindset and the feelings, everything we've talked about. In week three, we really talk about this concept of, remember these three groups I talked about, the strangers, the people already in your network, and these weak ties, you need all three. And so we really think strategically about the people around you um, and how you can engage them to support you on your career goals. Week four, we talk about, this is really the nuts and bolts. We talk about how to lead the conversation because it really is about leadership in a way that feels good, that feels energizing, that feels natural and not scripted. And yet you get results from the conversations. A lot of people, they tend to be extroverts, will tell me, we had this great conversation. Um, it was so amazing. I feel so great, but I'm not sure what we walked away with. Or I'm not sure that this person is gonna be able to help me. So it's an art and a science to having the conversation feel good and actually getting results. Um, week five, we talk about, as I mentioned, it's so key to take all this stuff and then integrate it into your daily habits and routines. And so we really talk about all of the beautiful ways we can do that and how that looks for you. And then week six, this is really cool. My co-lead, um, has a specialty in emotional intelligence. So I'm looking at networking through the lens of coaching, leadership, energy, feelings, uh, limiting beliefs, and she is coming with the emotional intelligence perspective. And so specifically, so she's weaving all of that through obviously, but in week six, we do a deep dive specifically on mindfulness and self-compassion. And so just as an example, raise your hand or type yes in a chat, in the chat, um, if you've ever had any sort of meeting, maybe it wasn't networking, but maybe it was a conversation and it didn't go as planned or it just really didn't feel good or, you know, kind of the meeting took, went pear-shaped and took a wrong turn. Um, and then after the call, you kind of beat yourself up and spent time kind of replaying, replaying what you could have done, what you should have done, right? So important for self-compassion in here, right? For the way the way this really becomes a habit and integrated into what we do um, is for us to be gentle with ourselves, especially as we're trying out new and different ways to do this. Um, so we meet six times live in this forum, although it's obviously much more interactive and people are on camera and sharing and doing exercises. Um, that 90 minutes goes by super fast, shockingly fast. And so there's a whole curriculum that sits behind it with exercises. I'm a writer, so there's a lot of written stuff in there, videos and a chance to interact and ask questions like, oh, Caroline, you know, you said to do it this way, but it really doesn't feel good. Let's talk about a way that feels better or this is the challenge I'm having. I reached out to this person and I haven't heard back. What do I do? Uh, so that's the course. Um, I'll share the link in just a moment for you to check out more and of course, take your questions, but I wanted to share that with you. So let's talk about next steps and then I will stop record and 
um, bring it back to the group for questions. First step, I would love for folks to stay in touch. I am a connector. Nothing energizes me more um, than connecting people. Obviously, I'll try to help you directly myself, but I love connecting people to other people or to resources that I think will help you. I have so much free content on my website um, about networking and about everything career related, related. If you don't see what your challenge is there, let me know. I'll create something for you. Um, and then make sure, as we talked about, I saw some commitments about making sure that your immediate network is crystal clear about what you want in your career and how they can help you. If you are interested, I would love for you to check out the course. I would love for you to join. We start our first call on June 4th, uh, and I actually open up the material and the modules a couple weeks before that. So we're actually gonna get started quite soon for those that want to join. So I'm gonna thank the people that are watching this recording for watching and joining. 